Okay, welcome everybody uh, to the Vices National Juried Exhibition. This is our second artist talk for the Vices Exhibition at Art Gallery and Studios. Uh, we have six artists that are gonna be talking about their artwork this evening. I'm Stephen C. Wagner. I'm one of the owners of Art Gallery along with Michael Yoakum and Priscilla Otani. So we have six artists that will be uh, talking about their artwork tonight. Uh, two of which are award winners. We have three Jurors' Choice Awards. And so two of the artists that are talking tonight actually won Jur Jurors' Choice Awards selected by Philip Yuley. And we're happy to have um, all the artists participating um, tonight in the exhibition. Okay, so um, again, if you have any qu questions for the artists, you may ch um, enter those into the chat box. So we'll go ahead and get started. So our first artist, is Jason Cheeseman Meyer. So Jason, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from, a little bit about you and how you came to, an, uh, to be an artist, uh, your process, and then the piece in the exhibition. Welcome to Jason. Certainly, thank you. Um, I'm Jason Cheeseman Meyer. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a painter and illustrator living in the Boston area of Massachusetts. Um, people, uh, when people ask where I'm from, I usually say here and there, but I've been in New England for 10 years now, so I think that's uh, pretty much home. Um, I uh, started out in art school, um, but only lasted a year there, um, which had to do with myself more than the school. Um, and I, I left art school and I went around the country looking for mentors and apprenticeships and studying with portrait painters and comic book artists and storyboard artists and film conceptors and um, anyone who had the skills that I wanted to acquire. So that was my very um, eclectic, non-academic uh, art education. Um, and uh, now I'd like to talk about the particular piece in the exhibition. There we go, the third drink. Um, so on the topic of, of vices, uh, a vice we tend to define as uh, something we enjoy that's bad for us. Um, uh, bad, bad for us. And um, alcohol for me certainly is advice. It's something I enjoy, it's bad for my health, but it's much more complicated than that. And I suspect a lot of vices really are because it's not, just an indulgence. It's a performance enhancing drug for me. Um, uh, one of my painting mentors used to keep a bottle of whiskey on the shelf, just like he kept his linseed oil. And when we get bogged down, you pour a drink, sit back, watch the painting, and just let things relax a little bit and let your mind get out of your own way. Um, and that became a, a part of my process. And, uh, as artists, we often need fresh eyes to see what's going on in our own painting. And that was one of the ways that I um, got into that. Somewhere around the transition from the second to third drink, I would get a clarity that allowed me to see uh, errors and problems and mistakes in my pieces that had been invisible to me before. Um, but of course, it's a, uh, a crutch with limitations. Um, and I wanted to capture as much of that as I could, both the, the enjoyment, the transition uh, of clarity and the fog that comes afterwards. Um, yeah, so um, thank you for inviting me to talk about my artwork and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, Jason, so uh, thank you so much for sharing that uh, about the piece. So just to clarify, so this is a self-portrait, is that correct? It is, yes. Okay, and did you use a photograph or were you looking in a mirror when you painted that? Um, both, uh, for this one, both. I, I had lighting that I took from a uh, photograph and then um, was also using a mirror to get certain details and stuff into it. Okay, and we also noticed there's quite a bit of different colors throughout the piece. There's a lot of colors. So could you just talk about your color choice and your use of color? Um, I've always been really interested in how colors, uh, vibrant colors can, can refract and blend and give an, an illusionistic space out of that blend, something that feels very um, 
painterly, very abstract, but in the little mix, it also hits the little parts of your visual cortex that recognize form. And anytime I can make paint do both of those things at the, at the same time is sort of the magic of painting for me. Okay, and you mentioned the kind of the fog of drinking. So it looks like in the piece, one side is pretty clear, but above the glass, it's kind of fogging part of the face. Um, so could you address that as well? Um, well, it's, so it's a transition of time. Um, and it's, for me, it kind of works both directions um, because when I'm um, using alcohol as a tool when I'm painting, um, as I said, it does build up to a, a strange clarity um, where I'm more able to recognize my own works, uh, my own mistakes, um, and have less of my ego in the way of, of reinterpreting what I'm seeing. And I get at that moment where things become more clear. But then, of course, as the alcohol catches up with you, fatigue, a bit of gloom, um, all of that takes it back away. So there's a a window of opportunity that opens and then slides back. Okay, Jason, well, thank you so much for um, sharing the information about the piece and about uh, opening up your own uh, life to us. Uh, we appreciate you participating in the talk tonight. Thank you. Okay, and so our next artist is um, Taryn Chase Jackson. So Taryn, if you go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from, a little bit about how you came to your artwork and then talk about the piece in the exhibition. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm Taryn Chase Jackson. I'm joining from Tuscumbia, Alabama, which is near Muscle Shoals of music recording fame. Um, as a kid, I was always obsessed with cutting up the TV guide and collecting images. Um, and then as a teenager, I started a zine and um, also had a bunch of punk rock pen pals. And we would exchange these little booklets where we'd design a page and, um, and mail them to each other because it was pre-internet. Uh, anyway, but so even though I took art classes through high school and college, collage was always the medium that I um, came back to. Um, so I sort of have done it on the side for a long time, but when we moved to Alabama a few years ago, I ended up joining a group of artists who meet a couple times a month for studio time and sort of um, connection. And so I started making work more regularly and was working on a series of a, based on the tarot deck that um, a couple of pieces were accepted into a juried show. Um, and so then when I heard about this show's theme, I was really excited to, to enter work and was thrilled to be um, included. So um, now I'd like to talk about my piece in the exhibition. Um, so this is uh, an analog collage. It's about eight by 10 inches and made primarily from magazine ads. Um, I titled it, um, I is for influencer, although on the surface it looks like it might be about the vice of gluttony. I do like a lot of food imagery in my work, um, but this in particular is spotlighting mental health and what I consider our culture's vice of self-obsession. Um, I have a daughter who's a senior in college, um, and I've really watched her struggle with the effects of social media on her mental health. Um, and so it's a topic of interest. Um, I've also benefited from social media. And so there is this really enticing side of it, in including connecting with artists and um, participating in online challenges and things like that. But there's something very voyeuristic about creating our online personas that I wanted to explore here, um, but also kind of keep it, you know, lighthearted and fun, um, but, but with that underlying sort of anxiety and, um, and disconnection that can come from social media. So thank you for inviting me to talk about my work. Okay, Taryn, thank you so much for sharing that with us. So um, I just had a, we have a few questions for you. Um, so in the imagery, uh, in the piece, there's Im multiple imagery in there and there seems to be windows mm -hmm. all sparsed around there. So could you just tell us uh, what that symbolizes? 
Sure. Um, in thinking about social media and how, you know, everything is sort of, is my food presentable enough for Instagram or, you know, are we ready for our selfie? And so that was kind of to add that sort of self-conscious layer of um, that I feel like social media adds to our lives. So it's kind of like the window of uh, Instagram. Yeah, a piece. Okay. And then there's the ice cream cone imagery too. So can you tell us why you selected that? Yeah, I, I like the juxtaposition of um, sort of this like sweetness or what you expect to be really sweet. So I think social media is very attractive to see, you know, what your exes are doing now and all, you know, all the things that entice us. Um, but then, you know, it can be unhealthy too. And so that's that's the juxtaposition okay and then there's a couple eyes in the pieces that really draw your attention too so uh, um could you address that yeah that's a little bit about the voyeuristic uh aspect of of looking at others but also you know being viewed ourselves um and sort of feeling like you're under a microscope and things like that so okay. And you pick some really vibrant colors to use in the piece as well. That hot pink that permeates through the whole piece um, is really eye-catching. Yeah, I mean, I like um, kind of candy colors or the things that, that just draw the eye and look like, like sweetness until you sort of get into it a little bit more and, um, and then are sort of jarred. <laughs> And so are, and you mentioned magazine ads or uh, most of your collages, do you use magazine ads? What other sources do you use? Um, I have done pieces using, you know, vintage children's books and, um, and found photographs and things like that. But um, I would say by and large right now, I'm, I'm using magazines. Okay, Karen, well, thank you so much for submitting to the exhibition, being part of it, and joining us tonight to talk about your artwork. It was a pleasure to hear from you. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you. And so our next artist is Rachel Lee. So Rachel, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from, a little bit about how you came to your artwork, and then talk about the piece in the exhibition. So welcome to Rachel. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Lee. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area, but I'm currently living in Brooklyn, New York. Um, my love for art stems from my childhood. As a little girl, I always, I was always drawing, um, but I didn't take art seriously until I got to community college. And I remember signing up for an 8 a.m. drawing class. And I remember every morning just getting up and looking forward to drawing a still life or drawing figures. Um, and then eventually I took a painting class and then that's when it really took off from there. I just fell in love with oil paints and decided this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Um, so I'd like to talk about my piece in the exhibition. So this piece is titled um, Untitled 2018. And it basically talks about how I became sober. Um, and when I created this piece, I was already one year into my sobriety. Um, and I just remember always talking to people about my journey and why I became sober. Um, and a lot of people were like, oh, it's okay. You know, a lot of people drink and drive. It's not like a big deal. And I kind of thought maybe they're just trying to be nice and whatnot and sympathetic to the situation. Um, but it, this piece was actually done for a midterm for my color theory class. Um, and my teacher gave us um, like instructions as to how he wanted our midterms to look like. So he kind of gave us this idea of working with either 80% light, 20% dark or 80% dark, 20% light and working with warm, cool contrasts. So I really wanted to create a dramatic piece that would really make my viewer look and criticize and just interpret what message I was trying to present. Um, so yeah, um, it was very, when I created this piece, it was very therapeutic for me. And thank you for inviting me to speak on my piece. Okay, Rachel, thank you for sharing that with us. So uh, one thing I just wanted to point out is the very large scale piece. What is the size of the 
the piece in the exhibition? It's 48 by 48, so it's four feet by four feet. So that makes it very powerful in the exhibition. Okay, and so we notice that in some of the imagery in the piece, uh, the, uh, the, your, it's a self-portrait, is that correct? Yes, so that's me. Um, okay. I had my cousin help me take the picture. So um, we were actually in my car when we did this. And um, I'm from this little town called Pacifica. And um, I'm like five minutes away from the beach. So I really wanted to capture myself pouring the tequila um, and have the sunset in the background. Okay, yeah, so I know when we're noticing, oh, it's at the beach, it's the sunset. So it's a, uh, we can tell it makes great colors uh, in the piece as well. And then there's items hanging from the rear view mirror. So can you tell us what those are and why you selected those items? Um, so yeah, so um, I grew up Catholic um, and I've always believed in God and I've always um, felt very secure whenever I've had like a rosary around me. I even have like a little, um, a little necklace with the Blessed Mother on. Um, and that rosary is actually my grandmother's. And um, the flag is the Nicaraguense flag. Um, so uh, I've always, I always carried that in my car, um, but I thought it was very interesting kind of looking at it now, having the rosary um, in the piece and talking about drinking and driving. So um, I really do believe divine intervention happened and that's the reason why I'm here today. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, you shared a lot of your, of your own personal uh, history with us in the piece. Um, thank you for participating in the exhibition and uh, talking about your art tonight. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye, Rachel. Okay, and the next artist we're going to hear from is Paul uh, Weiner. So, Paul, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from, tell us a little bit about how you became an artist and the piece in the exhibition. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Paul Weiner from Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, I kind of grew up with cameras. My father collected them. And so for many years, I took traditional photography pictures, kind of the kind go on postcards, which was okay. I didn't get too thrilled about it. And then um, I did a postdoc in San Francisco and took some courses at the Art Institute, which kind of changed my thinking from photographing with my brain to photographing with my heart. And um, I wanted more control over the images I created. So I went through stages where first I shook the camera when I took pictures, then I moved to sparklers, um, almost set some places on fire. So I thought that wasn't too great. Um, and then eventually ended up taking pictures with the flashlight. So I basically paint the scene with the flashlight, no other light source. I walk around and it takes about anywhere up to half an hour for a single exposure. I try to find interesting artists. This is uh, Edgar Stephen Curo. He's a local artist that does dystopian installations, uh, which are pretty amazing. This is an earlier one. And uh, basically the camera's on a tripod. It's, it has to be absolutely dark in the room. So putting garbage bags over the artist's huge windows is often as challenging as taking a picture. And um, I photograph interesting artists and uh, pretty happy with the result. There's no Photoshop work in my pictures. I have to get the exposure right. So this sometimes mean shooting two nights uh, where I can only do four or five pictures an evening. Uh, so uh, thank you for inviting me to talk about my picture. Okay, Paul, thank you for sharing that with us. So uh, you mentioned that you take photographs of other artists' work. So do you take uh, photographs of strictly installations or do you do yes. other types of work I, too? I work with the artists and create an installation that they're part of. And I try to make the picture look like something the artists would create if they could use my process. When I take the picture, I listen to music that the artist listens to when they create to try to get the brush strokes or the strokes of my flashlight uh, to kind of match 
the feeling of the art. So pretty much I do other things, but this is where my passion is doing this. Okay. So you have each artist create an installation and then you photograph it using your flashlight. Yeah, it's collaborative. I way okay. back I did like some fashion photography. So I helped stylize uh, the exhibit um, or the installation. So it's really a collaborative process. Okay. And, and then I this piece. And this piece, it's the color is really intense. So do you use color lighting at all? Nope. Single flashlight, very small. Uh, it's uh, uh, tungsten light. I don't color correct because uh, I kind of like the glow with the picture. Uh, it's, and also the fact that I can light things up to within a few inches. I can create shadows at different orientations. So this particular picture doesn't show it, but... I have all these shadows and people don't really know where they're coming from. So I have a lot of control because I'm putting down every single bit of light. I'm not using like a flash or any other source. So it sounds like you create a very interesting process. It's fun. It's actually hard work, but somewhat addictive. <laughs> And how long does it usually take to, to, to photograph a piece as far as setting everything up? And oh, it could take, I've had a couple of years till we thought of a good installation. Um, setting things up can take a whole day. Um, the artist helps, which is why most of the artists in my pictures have kind of a religious look. They're too exhausted to do anything, but kind of be glad that they don't have to set up anymore. So it gives me kind of a constant look of the people I photograph. Okay, Paul, well, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. Uh, and your process seems very uh, unique. And thank you. Uh, thank you for participating tonight. Thank you. Okay, and so our next artist is Deborah Wright. Deborah Wright, um, please uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, tell us where you're joining us from and a little bit about how you became an artist and about your piece in the exhibition. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Deborah Wright. I am an artist from Northern Virginia. I'm very grateful to Art Gallery and Juror Philip Buley uh, for including me in this exhibition. I started out this journey as a, an abstract painter. Um, I also, at the same time, had a, a base in, in fashion design. Um, struggled to find my way until about five years ago when I started to really exhibit in earnest, uh, when I just suddenly made a transition to found objects. Um, this medium has allowed me to really say what I wish to say. Uh, it's easier for me to communicate visually than verbally when I'm working with these materials. Uh, I try to convey my own truths while validating those of others. And I like to give a voice to our shared experience. I will often use provocative objects to elicit a very dramatic response because I find that that allows a point of entry um, to approach subjects that are either too difficult to discuss or are otherwise taboo or off limits. So now I would like to speak about my art in this exhibition. Thank you. This piece is entitled Money Shot. It is a fully functional undergarment generated from a pattern that I created and it is fabricated from actual US currency. So yes, those are actual dollar bills. Uh, it is the first in the series, Dirty Little Secrets, which is a collection of intimate apparel that is made from various denominations of paper money. Money Shot examines the power dynamic between sex workers and the patrons that they serve and really who holds the power in that equation. Uh, it addresses the obvious, the lust, the commod uh, commodification and the consumption aspects, but it also speaks to other elements of sexual acquisition, enticement, pursuit, anticipation and attainment. Um, the sexual act itself may be exhilarating, but these other elements in and of themselves are wonderfully intoxicating. So this piece was truly, it was magical to create it. And uh, it's just, it just took on a life of its own. So thank you for inviting me to speak about my work.
Okay, Deborah, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I just want to note that Deborah did receive one of the Juris Choice Awards. So congratulations, Deborah, for that. Um, so could you tell us about your inspiration to create this series using uh, intimate apparel with uh, denominations of money? Uh, I am essentially a, a, a anti-capitalist in nature. Um, and I've always been intrigued by not only the, the sex trade and, you know, the question of if it wasn't for sale, would anyone want it? Um, but in addition to that, how we, we treat our own bodies as commodities in a variety of different environments. Um, you know, you've heard of people using sex to get what they want in a relationship, um, you know, different ways that, that we use what we have to, to basically barter for what we want. And the series Dirty Little Secrets is actually a play on words because the concept of wearing those little racy red panties underneath a three-piece gray suit, that's your dirty little secret. Um, and I'm seeing a question here, is it legal to use dollar bills? In this, it is. And I actually have an attorney that I keep retained for such <laughs> for such questions. Um, so this using the money was very freeing, and and I think it gave a, a layer to the work that speaks of its own. Okay. And what other uh, subject matter do you address in your art, uh, other series of artwork? I speak to matters pertaining to social justice, um, wrongful incarceration, um, the site the nature of domestic violence, uh, the pollute, polluting of our environment, uh, things that mean something to me that I, I know mean things, mean something to other people. Uh, it's my way to, to build this bridge because when we start to speak about these subjects, it, it adds power to our actions, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's strength in numbers. It's this, this community working together in speech, thought, and deed. So. Okay, Deborah, well, thank you so much for giving us more information uh, and insight into your work and participating in the exhibition and the talk tonight. Thank you. Okay, and so our last artist is Hannah Youngblood. Hannah uh, is also one of the award winners. And well, Hannah, go ahead and, uh, and uh, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from and talk about your process and your piece in the exhibition. Um, hi, everyone. It's so great to be with you here tonight. My name is Hannah Youngblood. I am a lesbian feminist digital collage artist based in San Francisco. That's where I'm streaming from tonight. I grew up queer and fat in an extremely Christian rural working class area in the Missouri Ozark Mountain region. And for the past few years, my practice has been centered on unpacking that experience through collage and my main fixations have been images of ranch dressing mayonnaise cigarettes christ bleach blonde hair and other cultural relics and with that i would like to now speak about my art in this exhibition Yes, so what we're looking at is a digital collage piece called Dyke's Real Mayo. This is one of three in a series called Country Bread, B-R-E-D. And you can see a number of visual elements that I spoke on previously, ranch, mayo, cigarettes, Christ, but also some other normative items from the Midwest and Appalachian Ozark Fair, such as deviled eggs, spam light for the health conscious, beans and hot dogs, macaroni salad, biscuits, and little Debbie cosmic brownies. Not that cosmic brownies are an inherent part of this culture, but for me, they represent an extended world of processed foods and snack foods that are so heavily a part of this cuisine. And of course, you can also see myself in full Midwestern drag. And so what drew me to the show Vices is that I've been thinking a lot about how vice is something defined by a culture's morality, 
my own behavior can be seen as righteous or sinful depending on the culture I'm engaged in. For instance, as a fat woman, I enjoy sexualizing my body in my work and I shouldn't be glamorizing my body. That's what some would call glorifying obesity. And I should be on the treadmill begging for cultural forgiveness. And as a lesbian, I definitely shouldn't be engaging in that objectification. And my Christian upbringing would say my lesbian sexual history is a huge moral failing on my part. And there's also the liberal vice of enjoying processed foods, especially if they come from Walmart, which happened to be the main food source where I grew up. Of course, that is a vice for a number of reasons that I would agree with. Now, I like to revel in these cultural sins by displaying myself as a sexual object, fulfilling my own hedonism, processed foods, poking fun at conservative Christianity. And ultimately, I hope to challenge how we think about vice and cultural sin in our different communities, cultures by way of humor and surreal sexuality through collage. And thank you for inviting me to talk about my work today. Okay, Hannah, thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, all that information with us. It's a truly a very um, uh, powerful window into your life and you're very honest about uh, everything and the imagery that you select. So we noticed that the um, that basically image, image most of the imagery is mirrored uh, the same on each side. So do, in that series, do you do that with all the the pieces that you create? Um, I wouldn't say they're all mirrored, but I definitely care about symmetry and shapes and how lines are created in collage. This piece is the most mirrored effect. Uh, my other three are more based on centering objects and balancing in that way. So I think the uh, mirroring effect really brings the composition all together and unifies the piece. Um, and also your colors. So it's very much pastels throughout the piece. So could you address your color choice? Definitely. Yeah, the pastel is, is not a coincidence. It's heavily inspired by Midwestern color ideals, pastel, bright pink, um, soft yellows and throw in some gold for your biscuits and other foods. Okay, and so besides this series that is, uh, you know, very um, self, very, very strong self-expression, uh, do you do other types of co digital collages? I do. They're not always about me. Sometimes I just like to play with um, the surreal and uh, lately, I've been really into working with um, vintage stickers that I find online and playing with those and cutting them out digitally and just playing around. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate you participating in the exhibition and uh, talking about your art tonight. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you to the, art, to the artists. Uh, we've got a lot of insight into uh, the artist's personal lives. So thank you to uh, Philip Bewley for during this exhibition. Thank you for all the artists for participating in the artist talk this evening. So thank you to everyone, and I wish you a very good night. Take care. <laughs>